Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, I, I'm a girl. I had a lot of horse and unicorn themed things in case you haven't figured that out by now. This was back when they were harder to find. Does sound totally hipster? When I was into unicorns, there was hardly any unicorn stuff around. Ah. So today we are looking at The Enchanted Unicorn, written by Kathy Billingsley Smith. Illustrated by James Seward. Apparently there were stickers in this book. And unlike my Whisper the Winged Unicorn stickers, these ones I actually used because they were designed to go in the book. Ah. Huh. That's a Clifford stamp. Yes, that means I got this at the school book fair. Because ah. I would have never done that myself. More school book fairs. Yay! Thank you, Scholastic. Though this is from Will-O-Wisp Press. Ah. Yes, the sticker went on the text page, and then we had an illustration. Far, far away, beyond two oceans and three continents, lay a tiny land called Elysia. It was so small it could not be found on maps, but it was a beautiful country full of rolling hills, deep woods, and sparkling lakes. Animal families of every kind and color lived together in the woods of Elysia, and one tiny unicorn. Now, some people will tell you that unicorns do not really exist, but that is pure nonsense. So, beyond two oceans and three continents. I'm guessing it depends on where you start from. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe you could actually plot a course to Elysium. How do you can play a video game? I'm trying to remember what it was called. Tales from Elysium or something like that? Ooh, that's a pretty horse. Slash unicorn, because I couldn't quite see the horn at first because it's kind of dark where the background is. I can see the unicorn, the horn on the cover there, but I'm like, that particular one, you can kind of see the horn. And I guess where it's standing is supposed to match somewhere over on this page, which is really nice. Lots of flowers, trees. It's a nice, it's a nice landscape piece. Can even, they even have the nice depth effects by making things further off a little fuzzier and, uh, Kind of a lighter gray color, desaturated compared to the foreground, which is heavily saturated, because look at all those wildflowers. The unicorn of our story was as white and fleecy as an April cloud, with long golden tresses for her mane and tail, a horn of purest gold, and eyes that gleamed like stars. Her name, in fact, was Starlight. Starlight had no family of her own, and was often lonely. Though she was kind and friendly to all the other animals, many of them were jealous of her beauty and would say things to hurt her feelings. Wow. That's kind of interesting how the two pictures are exactly the same on this one except framed differently. Or I should say cropped differently. One's cropped to fit the stamps ratio, another is square to match the page ratio. Though what's really interesting is the way that cheekbone looks. It looks off to me. See how it stands out? being so white, it almost looks like there's a handle on the unicorn's face. Ah, I'm talking about that part right yeah. below the eye. I think that's kind of a shading issue. And with the exception of the very first sticker, I believe all of the stickers are actual mirrorings of the images. And looking at the edges of the stickers on the first page, I wonder if I somehow got the first one wrong. Hmm but none of the edgings look like they match that image. It's very nice. It's red hues, more of an evening setting. Got the golden hair of the unicorn. Got a pretty lake in the background, some islands. Lots of really nice detail on the plants and flowers and trees. As I recall, the illustrations were kind of the best part of this story. Hmm. You may have a horn, said the zebras, but we are fancier with our fine black stripes. You are only golden white, squawked the parrots. Look at us with our many colors. We are more splendid than the rainbow. Do not think you are so special, growled the lions. We are the kings of the beasts. We are stronger and more powerful than you will ever be. I'm seeing where the moral is going. But dang, the art just, it's really, really nice. 
especially on the stickers themselves. The thing about um, the glossiness is making the colors much richer on the stamps compared to um, the matte finish of the paper pages. Kind of interesting how they're mixing different types of foliage from different areas in some of these shots. Like the parrots are actually sitting on branches that are more akin to what they would be sitting on, but then you have a more American tree in the background. Oh, you know, it is a fantasy story. Mm -hmm. You are too small, called the giraffes, looking down their long necks at starlight. You are too slow, cried the antelopes as they raced by. As unicorns will, starlight forgave them their cruelty, but each day she grew sadder and lonelier. At night, she would often cry herself to sleep. Finally, one day, she decided to leave Alicia and look for another place to live. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Though, I must say, I've seen giraffes in real life. That one's a little short. Yes. I guess they did that to make it fit on the page. But also, giraffes are huge. Looking at the size comparison, this is like a baby one, like four weeks old. Yeah, because I knew they were big. But I didn't know how big until I went to a zoo and saw one in person and went, whoa. So yeah, Starlight is nothing but nice and the animals are all jerks, so she decides to leave. Also, once again, look at the detail on the grass and flowers. Oh my god. Incredibly detailed. That must have taken forever. That or they're one of the artists who can do something like this really quickly. Like, oh, yeah, this one took me a couple hours. A couple hours? And you're just like, seriously? Travel west through the deep forest for two days until you come to the great meadow, advised the wise owl. You will be happier there. So apparently not everyone's a jerk. Starlight walked until her legs ached. The overhanging branches pulled at her mane. Thistle and bramble scratched her tiny legs. Perhaps it was just the rustling of leaves. But a voice seemed to say, don't leave, Alicia. Stay. We need you. Also, I just remembered, she's supposed to be a tiny unicorn, so that giraffe was even smaller than we thought. Interesting. Well, how tiny is a tiny unicorn? If she's the only unicorn on the island, how do you have anything to compare her to? Starlight stumbled along, exhausted. Just when she was ready to give up and turn back, the darkness of the forest turned to sunshine, and she found herself in a beautiful meadow carpeted with flowers. And there, dancing and prancing among the flowers, were a dozen other unicorns, all gold and white like starlight. She could hardly believe her eyes. Yeah, look at all those unicorns in the background. I count three right now in this current shot. Four, of course, counting starlight. Well, you said in the background, so. Ooh, those are some nice mountains. Once again, all that detail in the grass area. It's almost like they spent a lot of time down there compared to the other areas now that I really look at the trees and stuff in the background that that's all background and like you said the depth by having things being fuzzier and less saturated the unicorns gathered around starlight and welcomed her warmly you've had a difficult journey said one come rest and share some food with us sister said another for the first time in her life starlight felt a sense of belonging each day brought new friendships and new pleasures starlight had never known such happiness Surely I will live here among my friends forever, she thought. Okay, if this is like near the end, it's like, so go be with your own kind? We're just a smidge over halfway, uh. if you look at the binding. Because on the previous page, uh. there was the staple. Yeah, so if, like, if it wraps up around this area, which by that last line I don't think it will be, it would have been like, yeah, go find your own kind. And just that detail the artist puts into the grass and flowers is just it keeps all the tiny little things geez and how big the actual print or canvas wherever this was originally made with is but try as she might starlight could not forget alicia and the animals who lived there one evening as she stood beneath the stars starlight thought to herself Oh, how I wish that everyone in Elysia could live together as happily and as peacefully as we do here. So you want the miracle? Ooh, I like the stars. Oh, 
I think it almost feels like just too many sparkly ones, but I get what the artist was going for. You'll understand better when I turn the page. Ah, uh, why does the artist put so much detail into the grass? It's amazing. It looks great. I mean, I would have been fine with having most of these as posters on my wall. They're more detailed than most of the unicorn and pegasi posters I had on my walls as a kid. I mean, there's even trees and grass on the hill in the background. That's It's not meant to be that detailed, but... Just look at that. Yeah, you know it's there. And, you know, the night shading, so you have darker shades on the grass and shadows and darker coloring for starlight. This is something I haven't mentioned before, but the detail in the main is almost the same as the detail in the grass. Highly detailed. She tossed her mane from side to side and lowered her golden horn until it touched the earth. As she raised her head, the dark sky seemed to open up and stardust sprinkled down upon her. For a moment, starlight shimmered like the very stars. Then, slowly, the light faded until all that remained was a glow, like fire, in her eyes. She stood still and silent as a statue, then smiled a dazzling smile. Hmm. That is another very pretty shot, and I like how you remembered what the next shot was. Because they got the stars falling from the sky, kind of sprinkling like stardust. Like they say that stardust sprinkled down upon her. Yeah. Yeah. I'm failing at description. I apologize. That's a very pretty shot. Though the angle on the head seems a little off to me, but it's nice. The next morning... Starlight bid farewell to her brother and sister unicorns, then turned and trotted off into the deep forest. This time she fairly flew through the tangle of trees and bushes that had once tried to stop her way. This time, the forest seemed to be guiding her, helping her along. Hurry, Elysia needs you, the wind seemed to whisper. It seemed like only a moment before Starlight found herself back in Elysia. Interesting. Ooh, this one's really detailed with the, not just the front grasses, but the back patterning on the background and everything like that it has a really, you're right, these would make great posters. I mean, especially with how glossy the posters would be, it would look like the stamps. Ooh, mm -hmm. it would be so rich. Mary, this is another one like the earlier image that's mostly more in slightly reddish or... Like afternoon kind of oranges and reds. Well, she left in the morning, so this either has to be early morning or late afternoon, because apparently it's a lot quicker going back than leaving. Hmm. The animals all gathered around her, their eyes and words still full of jealousy and unkindness. Nothing seemed to have changed, but it had. Starlight simply looked at the animals, her eyes burning with the light of a thousand stars. The animals stood as still as stone figures, gazing back at her. Then, suddenly, they all broke into bright smiles. Smiles of kindness, smiles of concern, smiles of love. The air felt different, clearer, softer, warmer. Okay, magical MacGuffin makes everyone happy. Yay! Mm. Yeah, that's definitely a short giraffe. Though, if Starlight's supposed to be a tiny unicorn, then that means the zebra is also tiny because they're about the same size. Mm. I was thinking about the size of the zebra, but I was like, mm, it could be taller than the lion. Oh, the zebra can be taller than the lion, but if Starlight's supposed to be a tiny unicorn, she should be smaller than the zebra. Makes you wonder what a big unicorn looks like. Oh, for all we know, all the animals are tiny on Elysia. Huh. You know, because the place is so small, you can't find it on a map. Hmm. Darius likes to shade the faces kind of weird unless it's something on the page there on the lion. No, that's the way it's... Huh. Other than some marks on the lion's face, very well done. I like the hair on the elbows in the front. The mane looks wild. It looks like the artist used the same paintbrush on both the those thin grasses here, the dark green ones, and the mane. Hmm. About the same thickness and very similar style. And Starlight's still covered in Starlight, so yes, magic. And now, for the second time in her life, 
Starlight knew that she belonged. Ah, uh, I don't belong, so I'm going to become magical, come back, and forcibly change everyone's mind. What was that spell in My Little Pony? Oh, look, more stickers. That pretty much match the stickers in the front of the book. Mm-hmm. Well, that were in the front of the book. Because it was 24 collector stickers. But each one... Yeah, except some of them match the animals in the frame compared to the unicorn. Oh, I should see this particular shot right here. You mean the second to last page exactly like it looks in the sticker? Ah! That's in the book? That sticker I actually hadn't looked at. Because I was just thinking, was there a sticker on that page? There was a sticker on all the pages. That much I kind of remembered, but at that particular moment I was like, I don't remember. I think there's a sticker on every page. Yes, there Including the very last one, where there is no adjacent picture. Right, but if you look, it's the picture split in half. So the first picture oh. has the animals, and the other one has starlight. Both oh. from the same image. I see, yeah. Yeah, so... What did you think? I had trouble with this one even at the time. Okay, people were mean to her even though she was nice. So she left and went to where people treated her better. And then went back to the people who were jerks to her and suddenly made them be nice. There seems to be issues with that train of thought. A lot, because one, you don't let people treat you meanly. You don't put up with that. She was good in that she forgave them and went on with her life, but you don't let other people make you miserable. And then the whole thing with going and being only with her own kind... That's separatism and exclusion as opposed to inclusion. And then just randomly going back and suddenly everything's better just because she's looking at them. Yeah, she brings a magical mug back with her to make everything better. And that helps children how? It's more about like dealing with people who don't like you. Like that episode of Recess. That was an awesome episode. And I would probably have less issue... If um, the description on the back of the book did not read as followed. Starlight, the enchanted unicorn of our book, has a lesson to teach every reader about being different and about belonging. Um, no. No, there wasn't a lesson about that. There definitely, there definitely wasn't a lesson about that. It's go be with your own kind and make everyone like you. How many children show villain witch slash wizard characters end up casting spells at their high school to get other people to like them and make them be popular. It never works out in the end. No, but apparently here it works out in the end. It should be more that she learned something and then came back and taught it to the other animals and they learned to go, oh, we really shouldn't be that mean to you. We're sorry that we were jerks. And we don't know if the other animals were jerks to each other or if they all ganged up on Starlight. I know the art was very pretty, though. No, the art is gorgeous. I think that's one of the main reasons I kept this, because the art is gorgeous. Because I have, in the past, thinned out my books. I have very clear memories of a whole set of Lady and the Tramp books that I no longer have. Mm. They were basically post-movie books with the puppies. You know, back before they made the direct-to-video sequel? Ah, so, this was The Enchanted Unicorn, written by Kathy Billingsley-Smith, illustrated by James Stewart. Thank you for listening. If you would like to track down a copy of this and look at the pretty pictures, uh, check below and hopefully we'll have a link for you. This is relatively new in the scheme of things, but books do go out of print. Something I just can't understand. It's a book why should it stop existing it's called being expensive to print it though nowadays we have this wonderful thing called digital books which doesn't really cost much i don't know server wise how they're stored but i'm pretty sure them being digital makes it a whole lot easier to keep them in print as it were well the digital copies don't take up quite as much space because you would just need one master file and then assign unique pass keys to keep track of inventory and you don't have the physical printing costs of paper and ink. You just have the cost, the author, the illustrator, the storage, and any cost associated with distribution. Mm -hmm. And just licensing overall. Who pays for what, where, who has the rights to sell it. Yep. 
pretty much. So, if you haven't been around before, I've done a lot of these, like over 70, and yes, they're all children's books, and a lot of them are animals, and a lot of them are unicorns, but there is still a decent variety. There's little golden books, serendipity books, license books, a very long playlist of two-minute stories that aren't two minutes. Yeah, that was a fun one. Mm-hmm. Kind of missed that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, and one last plug, as I usually put the two together, but Ebates, if you just feel like shopping, there's a link for that too. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.